Did you know that the biggest obstacle to a fulfilled, purposeful life might be the very habits we overlook daily? Think about it every time we act without fairness. Let fear dictate our choices or give in to fleeting desires. We're stepping further away from the lives we truly want. It's a subtle trap, one where ordinary behaviors slowly become vices, distorting our relationships, clouding our decisions and undermining our potential. If you want to break free from these invisible chains, you need to understand why ancient wisdom still has the best advice for modern life. The Stoics believed that to live fully, we must confront and transform these vices into virtues, aligning ourselves with values like justice, courage and temperance. Imagine living in a way where your actions reflect the best version of yourself, where you're not just reacting to life but intentionally shaping it. In this journey, we'll uncover why vices like injustice, cowardice and intemperance pull us down and how virtues can lead us to a more balanced, resilient and truly rewarding life. Number 1. Understanding the Vice of Injustice Imagine the joy of a world where everyone acts fairly, where every individual feels respected and valued. In moments where justice prevails, we feel uplifted, supported and interconnected. Maybe you've experienced a small act of fairness, where a friend went out of their way to stand up for you, or a colleague recognized your hard work. These moments can make us feel seen and respected. But imagine a life where such experiences are not just rare moments, but the foundation of daily interactions. This vision is uplifting, creating a sense of hope and unity. Now let's delve into what injustice truly means. At its core, injustice is the betrayal of that bond, a vice that causes harm not only to those affected, but to society as a whole. When injustice appears, it often strikes in the form of dishonesty, favoritism or exploitation. Injustice thrives in environments where individuals place their interests above the welfare of the community. It's not just about someone being wronged, it's a breakdown of trust and harmony. Picture a workplace where promotions are awarded based on personal connections rather than merit or a situation where laws protect the powerful but overlook the vulnerable. These examples illustrate how injustice creates a divide, fostering resentment and a sense of alienation among those who fall victim to its hold. This divide is where injustice harms us most deeply. Looking back, history is filled with examples of societies and civilizations that succumbed to injustice, with leaders who favored their close allies at the expense of the common person. Reflect on the fall of great empires, not just due to external forces, but from the rot of corruption within. Ancient Rome, once a beacon of structured governance, crumbled under the weight of greed, favoritism and corruption. Even today, we witness the effects of injustice in various forms, inequality, prejudice and systemic bias. As you consider this, a question arises, what does it mean to pursue justice in our own lives? How do we, as individuals, confront a vice as pervasive and deeply rooted as injustice? Can we cultivate habits that not only promote fairness in our immediate surroundings, but also inspire others to embrace this virtue? Imagine a life where we not only strive for justice in grand gestures, but also in the smallest, most personal decisions. This curiosity about justice leads us to examine our roles in a world seeking balance, stirring thoughts on the actions we can take to foster fairness around us. Number two. Cowardice, the stoic perspective on fear. There's a happiness that comes with feeling brave and unafraid, isn't there? Think about a time when you stood up for something you believed in or pushed yourself to do something outside your comfort zone. The thrill, the empowerment and the sense of accomplishment can make us feel alive. But as much as courage lifts us, there's another feeling, one we all know too well fear. 
and sometimes fear can grow into something more insidious cowardice. To truly understand cowardice, we have to look at its relationship with fear. Stoicism teaches that while fear itself is a natural response, cowardice is what happens when we let fear rule our actions. Fear keeps us alert. It can even save us in moments of danger. Cowardice, however, emerges when we allow fear to paralyze us, when we shy away from doing what is right or necessary simply because it makes us uncomfortable. Stoics like Seneca and Epictetus believed that courage is not the absence of fear, but the mastery over it. They argued that courage lies in acknowledging fear, confronting it, and taking action despite it. Picture moments in history where courage triumphed over fear. Consider figures like Rosa Parks who, in a moment of immense societal pressure, refused to give up her seat, sparking movements and challenging oppressive systems. Her courage didn't mean she wasn't afraid, it meant she chose not to let fear decide her actions. On the other hand, history also offers examples where leaders, driven by cowardice, chose self-preservation over the well-being of those they served. Think about times when officials ignored impending dangers, choosing safety over speaking up, even when lives were at stake. Reflect on your own life. Are there moments you regret because fear held you back? Maybe you didn't speak up in a meeting, stayed silent in a situation where you witnessed something wrong, or let opportunities slip by because you were scared of failure or judgment. We all carry these memories, a reminder of times when fear outweighed our desire to act. These reflections serve as a guide, prompting us to ask, how often do we let fear decide for us? What kind of life would we lead if we made our decisions free from the limitations of cowardice? The curiosity builds as we consider this if we could master our fear, if we could embrace courage in all its forms. What kind of impact would we have on our lives, on those around us? The Stoics urge us to wonder, to seek ways to nurture courage in our daily lives. With this in mind, we're left to ponder how we might transcend the limits of fear, creating a life not just lived, but truly experienced. Number three, the pitfall of intemperance. Consider the happiness and fulfillment that come with balance when we enjoy life's pleasures without feeling overwhelmed by them. Think about a celebration where the food is delicious, the company is wonderful, and the atmosphere is light. These are the moments that bring joy, allowing us to enjoy life's gifts. But when indulgence tips into excess, this joy fades, leaving us with a sense of emptiness or dissatisfaction. It's a fine line, and yet once crossed, it becomes clear how easy it is to fall into the pitfall of intemperance. In Stoic philosophy, intemperance refers to the inability to control our desires, leading us to seek gratification without restraint. When we allow our desires to govern our lives, we lose sight of balance. Intemperance, then, isn't just about overeating or overindulgence in pleasures. It's about a deeper surrender to impulses, a loss of mastery over our own minds. The Stoics believed that a person ruled by intemperance is, in a sense, enslaved by their desires, constantly seeking satisfaction in ways that ultimately harm them. Seneca once said, It is not the man who has too little, but the man who craves more, that is poor. Imagine historical figures who, despite their immense wealth or power, were never satisfied. Kings who, driven by greed, expanded their territories at the expense of their people or leaders who indulged in excess to the point of destruction. History shows us how intemperance, left unchecked, leads to downfall, and in our own lives, the vice of intemperance appears in countless forms, overworking, obsessing over material possessions, or constantly seeking validation through social media. These behaviors reflect a deeper longing, one that no amount of indulgence can satisfy. Nostalgically, think of simpler times when you found contentment in smaller things. 
Maybe it was a childhood memory where happiness was a day spent with friends or a moment where laughter and companionship brought joy without the need for extravagance. Such memories remind us of the beauty of simplicity, a time before life's complexities took hold. Now let's ask ourselves, what would life be like if we reclaimed that balance? The Stoics challenge us to wonder, to reflect on how we can seek fulfillment without falling into the trap of overindulgence. What steps might we take to enjoy life's pleasures without being controlled by them? This curiosity about moderation leads us toward a life where joy is constant, untainted by the excess that leaves us wanting more. Number 4. The Path from Vice to Virtue Imagine a world where each of us lives in alignment with our values, a world where decisions are driven by compassion, courage and integrity. Think of how different daily interactions would feel if every person you met valued fairness over personal gain, strength over avoidance, and temperance over indulgence. It's a joyful vision, one where humanity rises above petty quarrels and selfish desires to cultivate genuine harmony and purpose. Picture yourself in this world, interacting with others in ways that reflect your best self, and experiencing the peace that comes from knowing you're working towards something greater than yourself. This is the happiness we aim for when we speak of virtue, a world that offers fulfillment not because of its perfection, but because of our collective journey toward improvement. Virtue isn't merely a lofty goal, it's the antidote to the vices that so often steer us away from our truest selves. Each vice, be it injustice, cowardice or intemperance, forms barriers between us and the life of purpose we desire. Injustice chips away at trust, leaving communities fragmented. Cowardice keeps us confined within invisible walls, discouraging us from acting in line with our convictions. Intemperance entangles us in cycles of excess and craving, stealing our ability to find joy in simplicity. Together, these vices create a world that is reactive rather than intentional, fractured rather than unified. But Stoic philosophy offers us a different path, one that requires discipline but promises profound inner peace and resilience. At the heart of Stoic thought lies the belief that virtue is achievable and accessible to all. The Stoics were firm in their conviction that every individual, regardless of circumstance, can aspire to live a life aligned with virtue. For them, virtues were not just moral ideals, but practices. Courage, wisdom, justice and temperance became pillars to build a meaningful life. They taught that by focusing on these pillars, one could overcome vices and lead a life that not only benefits oneself, but also uplifts those around them. Imagine adopting these pillars in your own life, each day striving to embody them. Picture the sense of purpose and fulfillment that would arise from this continuous, intentional journey. However, choosing this path requires us to confront the parts of ourselves we'd often prefer to ignore. Many of us shy away from recognizing our own tendencies toward injustice, fear or excess. We see these vices as faults, as things to hide, rather than as areas for growth. But the Stoics taught that true strength lies not in denying our flaws, but in facing them with courage. Imagine the humility and resilience that comes with this kind of self-honesty. Imagine admitting to yourself that you have areas of improvement, not as a source of shame, but as a foundation for genuine progress. This reflection is where transformation begins, a turning point where vices can be acknowledged, understood, and ultimately replaced with virtues. Consider how often we're tempted to react impulsively to make decisions based on comfort or convenience rather than principle. In these moments, the path from vice to virtue can seem overwhelming, like trying to swim upstream against the powerful currents of habit and societal expectations. 
Think of the courage it takes to act with integrity when faced with injustice, or to remain calm and moderate when our impulses are urging us toward indulgence. But, as the Stoics remind us, the journey toward virtue is a gradual one. It's not about perfection, but about consistent progress. Each choice, no matter how small, becomes a step on this path. Imagine how these small choices could shape your life over time, creating a version of yourself you can truly be proud of. Reflecting on this, we might find ourselves drawn to moments from our past, times when we could have chosen differently. Maybe there were situations where we compromised on justice for the sake of convenience, times when fear held us back from speaking our truth, or moments when excess left us feeling hollow rather than fulfilled. These memories can be painful, a reminder of times when we fell short of our ideals. But they also serve as powerful guides, pointing us toward the areas where we have the most room to grow. Imagine approaching these memories not with regret, but with gratitude for the lessons they hold. These reflections, while challenging, are essential steps on the path to virtue. They ground us, remind us of where we've been, and guide us toward where we aspire to go. The beauty of Stoic philosophy lies in its practicality. It doesn't demand perfection. It asks only that we strive to be better than we were yesterday. The Stoics believed that every person has the capacity for growth, that no matter how entangled we may feel in our vices, there is always a path forward. This belief is empowering because it places the responsibility and the possibility of change within our own hands. Imagine if every day we made a conscious effort to act justly, to face our fears and to moderate our desires. These actions may seem small in isolation, but collectively, they shape a life of integrity and purpose. In a world filled with distractions and temptations, the pursuit of virtue can feel like a solitary journey. It requires resilience to hold fast to principles in a culture that often celebrates self-interest over self-restraint. But the Stoics teach us that this journey, though challenging, is also deeply rewarding. As we cultivate virtue, we find ourselves becoming less reactive, more grounded, and increasingly content. Picture yourself in moments of challenge, where instead of feeling overwhelmed, you find a quiet strength, a calm confidence that comes from knowing you are aligned with your values. This inner peace is the reward of virtue, a fulfillment that no external achievement can provide. As we navigate this path, we become examples for others, inspiring them to pursue their own journey toward virtue. Just as we look to figures like Marcus Aurelius or Epictetus, whose lives embodied these principles, we too can become sources of inspiration for those around us. Imagine the impact of living with such integrity, how it could inspire friends, family, and even strangers to strive for greater virtue in their own lives. This ripple effect creates a community built not on competition or greed, but on mutual respect and shared purpose. It's a legacy that goes beyond personal achievement, contributing to a world that values character as much as success. In reflecting on this path, we're left with a sense of curiosity. What might life look like if we fully embraced this journey? What could we achieve, not just externally but internally, by dedicating ourselves to a life of virtue? The Stoics invite us to explore these questions, to see virtue not as an endpoint, but as a continuous path of growth. It's a path that promises not only personal fulfillment, but also a deeper connection with the world around us. So, as we ponder this journey, we're encouraged to take that next step no matter how small, toward a life of courage, justice, temperance, and wisdom. As we've journeyed through the Stoic path from vice to virtue, it's clear that transforming our lives requires dedication, self-awareness, and the courage to confront our own limitations. By understanding the true weight of injustice, overcoming cowardice, 
and reigning in intemperance, we create space for virtues like fairness, courage, and self-control to flourish. These shifts don't just change our habits, they shape who we become. The road from vice to virtue is challenging, but every small step takes us closer to a life of meaning and resilience. If you've watched this far, drop a hundred in the comments to show you're one of the rare few committed to seeing things through. That dedication is powerful, and if you're serious about transforming your life, make sure to join our journey, hit subscribe, and let's build a life rooted in virtue together.